Heather said, I have heard my name called numerous times at nighttime, but the voice is someone who is alive and part of my life. How does this happen? Wow. This happens to me all the time. So you're not alone. Isn't it good sometimes to know I'm not nuts. <laughs> this happens to somebody else. This happens a lot with my husband, Jeremy. My husband, Jeremy, travels a great deal. In fact, Jesus, take the wheel. I need my husband to come home. Come on now. He's traveling all the time. And when he, he enters a particular energetic state when he's thinking about me and he's missing me. And you know, he loves him some Crystal and Compton. He loves him some Crystal and Compton and he misses me and I know he does. And I miss him. Something happens because we have connections. I call these Aka chords, well, Hawaii calls these Aka chords. They're channels, but anybody with whom you have a significant relationship, whether it feels good or bad, if it's significant, you've got chords with those people and energy and information and experience and knowledge travel those chords. And so when my husband's feeling something in his heart and in his body and it's intense, it travels to me and I feel it on my end. And that might manifest as me also suddenly missing him quite a bit or being emotionally impacted. But sometimes, a few times a year, I will hear his voice in my house because I'm alone. It's just me and my three huge dogs. But I'll hear him very clear. Crystal, are you here? And I'll get up and I'm like, I know I heard that. I'll walk around my house. Of course he's not here. He's in Boston or he's in Korea. But I hear his voice. It's the intention of the energy. It's traveling through the channels. It's so cool. And also, it's not just sound, people. People can actually send representations of themselves through those channels. You want to hear another story? I've told this before, but let me tell you, because it's true and it's crazy. I dated this guy. I dated this guy for two years, three years or whatever, but it was super intense. And our relationship was super enmeshed and got real codependent, which was crazy because I would, I would consider myself quite spiritually aware at the time that I entered into it, but it spun me out in short order. By the end of it, I was like super thin, if you can believe that. Rude. I was <laughs> super thin. I was all sick and just out. I was just nuts. But he was extremely psychic. And when I, when I met him, he was very well balanced. But during the course of our knowing each other, he had gotten into a motorcycle accident and he'd suffered a traumatic brain injury. And it changed him. It changed his energy. It changed how he thought. It changed everything. And it didn't help that he was also a drinker and he just became a heavier drinker with a TBI. It was like terrible. Nonetheless, we were still very enmeshed and he was very psychic. But I was intrigued by that, of course, because you know I'm crazy. But another thing that he could do, and I tell you it's the truth. I tell you it's the truth. I didn't believe him. I thought he was a big fat liar. He said, he could make people do what he wanted them to do. There was a window of time that was created for some reason. And he would be able to sense when that window opened. And he was able to impress his will upon somebody to do whatever it is that he wanted them to do. The first time he told me that, I'm like, yeah, right. No way. And he's like, I, I, I promise. And he told me the story of when he was a teenager, before he had the TBI, before he was drinking heavily teenager. He was dating a girl. She was a babysitter. She invited him over one night and she, he wasn't supposed to go because parents were out and they wouldn't have liked it. But he goes anyway and they're whatever, hanging out and the parents come home early, which throws him into a state of panic. And so the babysitter says, oh my God, get into the basement, get into the basement. He goes down into the basement. She finds, she finds this closet She's like, just get in the closet. Um, I'll get rid of them. They're probably here just to check on something and they'll leave. And he's like, okay. So he gets into this kind of walk-in closet and goes to the back of the closet, just against a wall, like an open wall. There's like coats and stuff along the sides, but the back of the wall is just exposed. And that's where he just stood and he listened. And he could hear his girlfriend upstairs talking to the parents. He could hear that the parents weren't just stopping in. In fact, they were home for the night. He could hear the babysitter girlfriend get her stuff and the car door as the father took her home. 
And he's downstairs in the basement in the closet in a panic now. He's like, oh my God, I'm home. And he can hear the mom walking upstairs above the basement. And he can hear the mom checking on the baby and checking the house. But the mom must have had a weird sense. She opens the door to the basement. And here he's like starting to literally hyperventilate. He's freaking scared. Because what's going to happen when he gets caught? <laughs> so he can hear her walk down the stairs. And as this is happening, he starts saying to himself and willing from the deepest parts of himself, bone deep, I am invisible. I am invisible. I'm invisible. I'm invisible. And he can hear her because again, we can split our consciousness in this way. So he's intending and he's deep into it. And he, he's, uh, he was so psychic. He's deep into it, but he's also hearing her move around the basement and she comes to the door of the closet. I am invisible. I am invisible. She opens the door. Again, he's at the back wall. She looks at the coats, looks right over him, looks at the coats again, looks around, turns off the light and shuts the door. She did not see him. He was standing right up against the wall. He was invisible. Now, of course, he was also stuck. Like, how are you going to get out of that? And he ultimately had to say, excuse me, Mrs. Whoever, I'm sorry. but And she freaked out and it was bad. But <laughs> he said that she could not see me and I made it happen. Like a window happened, a window opened rather, and I made that happen. And I always thought he was full of crap. I'm like, okay, whatever. Until we were out of my deck and he, I, we were talking and he grabs like a pen and a paper out of his pocket and he just writes something down and he puts it on the table and then I talk and I start doing this, start messing with my nose. I'm a fa I mess with my face, I noticed that, but my nose got really itchy. Um, I don't know if you've ever taken codeine, like kind of itchy like that, like just ugh. And he kind of chuckled and I'm like, what are you laughing at? And he's like, put, he put the paper, he slid the paper over and I looked at it and he says, your nose is itchy. And I, I looked at him and he said, I just felt it, the, w the window happened right then. And I made you itch your nose. And that was, the, that was when I knew this guy is off, he's not balanced, and he's really psychic. All of this is to say, because you asked whether somebody could project their voice and be alive. And so this is all leading to this here. He was able to project through these cords an apparition that represented him, who he was, imbalanced. And this apparition started showing up on dates that I had with other people, started showing up in my daughter's room and starting, started showing up in my room. This apparition was dressed as a motorcycle guy with a, a leather jacket, jeans, motorcycle boots, but with like this big circle head and this weird smile and this weird couple of eyes that were just dark, dark, dark. The first time I saw this entity with my eyes open. It was in the doorway of my bedroom and I immediately just said, you got to leave. The second time my daughter came into my room or wherever I was and said, mom, I saw a really weird man. And she described this big circle head, this weird smile. And this was during the course of us splitting, breaking up. We kept splitting and breaking up and getting back together and all that stuff. I went out on a date with a fed, <laughs> with a cop super it, lots of integrity and also skeptical i've i told him exactly who i was and, and what was up he's driving me home one night and he turns to say something to me and he goes what and i said and he, he startled he was like six five he's this huge guy he's he startled and i'm like what and he's like i saw something right next to you and i said okay what was it and he said it was like this really big circle head and he described this entity. By then I had figured out that when this ex was thinking about me, when he was mad at me, when he was anxious about the state of our relationship, when he was wondering, suspicious, super jealous, when he was in his feelings and super strongly psychic and off balance, he would send through the cords this being showing up on dates, showing up in my house. The last time this being showed up, he showed up to my husband, Jeremy who I just love. My husband at the time is installing our new kitchen in this house that he just bought. He's been working his ass off and he hears something at the top of the stairs, which you can see from the kitchen. And he turns around and he sees this weird circle face, which I had never told him about because I don't really talk about my ex-boyfriends or my dates and stuff with the same features. 
And he just went, oh, Smith Wigglesworth did. He's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> he still has stuff to do. My husband gets a lot of different evidences and he's just like, let me sleep. That's his priority. But that was the last time that being traveled those cords. And that was around the time I believe this ex was finally letting go. Like finally just saying, okay, this is not going to happen. But he would send actual beings into my space, not just sounds, not just voices, not just tones, not just energy, not just, ooh, I'm thinking he's thinking about me way more than that, an actual being, and it was really weird looking. Um, but there is something called bilocation. I don't mean to be long-winded, I just think it's probably of interest to you, but there is something called bilocation, which is where you can project yourself consciously and intentionally into the space of another person, not just in like the form of remote viewing where you're just checking it out and seeing it, but they can't see you, but you actually project an apparition of yourself into that space. This is well documented. You could read The Occult. You could read Mysteries by Colin Wilson. He talks about this phenomena a little bit, but it's pretty fascinating, but it does happen. And I just think with my ex-boyfriend, he wasn't intentionally trying to project himself into my space. It was just his weird energy, super intense and strong, traveling those channels and, and showing up when he was thinking really strongly about me. And why wouldn't you? Have you seen the space? Oh my God. To learn more about me, the services I offer, and also my online spiritual community, please visit me at crystalancompton.com. See you there.